We're looking at some algebra, and in particular, we're going to be uh, reducing some uh, equations to quadratic form and then finding the solutions. So here's a website um, that this stuff is organized on a little better than actually the YouTube channel, plus there should be some problems in there for your work in algebra and calculus and be adding a lot more uh, subjects in the future. All right, so let's make it over to the whiteboard and get started. Okay, so we'll label this one here as number one. How's that? And um, you know what? We need to go with a little darker color than that, don't we? This looks like a good one here. Okay. So we're going to start off with the radical, or I should say the square root of x minus 1, and set that equal to 2x minus 3. Okay, so we've got these radicals here that we've got to uh, deal with, but they're pretty easy to deal with. So what we're going to do here is we're going to square both sides to get rid of this radical. So let's do that. So I'll go ahead and rewrite. Squaring the radical, that'll make that radical disappear. And of course on the intermediate steps, I hope you understand how that works, right? This is really a, a 2 right here. Hmm. You know what? Okay, let's say I rewrote this. We'll just talk about the intermediate step, but I'll only do this once. So rewriting this into exponential form, going from radical form into exponential form, okay, if we were to square this like we're doing here, so we're just rewriting it in its exponential form, and now when we go to square it, remember we multiply exponents. So a half times 2 is 1. Right, so then we'd just be left with x minus 1. You know, it's raised to the first power, but we wouldn't write that. Okay, so that's what's happening here. All right, so let me just go ahead and erase, erase that. I guess it's worth mentioning. All right, so in other words, we square a radical. The radical just disappears, and we're left with x minus 1. And uh, we're actually, if we're going to square this side, we have to square this side over here also. And then, of course, we have to multiply this thing out. So we have 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3. And so we need to multiply that out. And uh, you know what? <clears throat> I'm going to move this over to the left a little bit. So we end up with x minus 1 is equal to, so 2x times 2x is 4x squared and then 2x minus 3 is 6x and then we have negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x and then negative 3 times negative 3 is positive positive 9 okay so what do we got going on now well we have x minus 1 is equal to 4x squared minus 12x and then plus 9 4x squared minus 12x we're gonna go ahead and get everything over to the right hand side minus x plus 9 plus 1 set that equal to 0 so we have 4x squared minus 13x and um, plus 10. All right, setting that equal to 0. Okay, so we'll need to uh, probably factor. I think we can just factor this one and we'll start off with this. I know sometimes it's a trial and error situation going on here some guesswork. So we look at 10. I mean, what are the factors? We got 1 and 10. 1 times 10 makes 10, or 2 times 5 makes 10. Now, whatever it is, um, we got this negative 13, but see, this is 
throwing a monkey wrench in the situation here. See, we could put a 2 here and a 2 here also, but I'm just hoping it's just a 4x. So two numbers multiplied together, that gives us 10. Let's try, um, ooh, I don't know. Let's try 2 and 5 here. So this has got to be a plus sign. So either both these signs are negative or they're going to be positive. But let's take a look at this. But we've got to have a negative here. So see, because 4 times 5 is 20. And uh, let's say that was a negative sign here. So that would be negative 20, but then um, minus 2. No, that would be 22. Okay. Let's try this. I think I see something here. Let's do 5 here and 2 here. Okay, 8 and 5. Ooh, 8 and, let's see. 8 and 5, eight and five is 13, isn't it? If I did a minus and a minus here, let's see. That would be negative 8. And then minus 5 is negative 13. Negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10. There you go. So then once we have factored... Okay, got the proper factorization there. What we'll do now is just set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. So in this particular case, x is equal to 5 fourths. Right? If we solve for x, bring the 5 over and then multiply by the 1 fourth across. So we have one possible solution. Now you notice I said possible solution. This is a possible solution. And then the other one's easy. This is x minus 2. Okay, that's supposed to be a 2 there. Let's see if I can morph that into a 2. There it is. So we have x is equal to 2. Okay, so here's our two possible solutions. So what we'll need to do now is go back up to our original equation and plug those in. So let me go ahead and write the original equation down here since we can't get everything on the screen. So we have x minus 1 is equal to um, equal to something, 2x minus 3. So let's go ahead and plug 5 fourths in. We're going to check to see if this is a solution. It's equal to 2 times 5 fourths minus 3. Okay, so what is this? This is uh, 5 halves minus 3, and uh, what do we get on that? 5 halves minus 3. Um, I think this is a negative a half, I believe. Now, <clears throat> let's take a look at this. We get a negative over here on the right hand side of the equal sign, so this becomes negative a half. And, okay, so when we square root this number over here, it cannot be negative. Okay, we can't be getting a negative. And that tells me that this side is not equal to this side. Now, when we actually do this math here, we should be getting a half. And a half is not equal to a negative a half. So this is not a solution. Let's use a red. Let's use red over here to indicate. That's not a solution. Okay? So we know that for a fact. Now, let's try, um, what's our other option here? Two. Okay, so let's try 2. So let's just do that. So we have 2 minus 1 is equal to 2 times, well, possibly. You know, I should have put um, right here a question mark. In other words, this is a question. This is in question here. Okay, so we have 2 times 2 minus 3. 2 times 2 minus 3. So what do we get over here? Well, we get 2 minus, so we just get 1 on that deal, don't we? And then we've got uh, 4 minus 3 up ah, is 1. So 1 is equal to 1. Bam. So that's a solution. So we could write curly brackets and put a 2 in here and say that this is the solution set. Right, that's the solution set to our original equation up here. The solution set is 2. All right, let's work another one here. And we'll actually, by coincidence, we'll label that as this is the second problem. How's that? Um, <clears throat> okay.